This is Joey's first day at this isolated island. He went for a swim at a beach near his house, but unfortunately he went too far and the tide swept him away to the island. He had no food with him and he could only find a bottled water that would last less than 3 days. So what will happen next to Joey? When Joey's blood glucose level depleted, his body will enter the first phase of starvation, which is the carbohydrate metabolism. Carbohydrate will undergo two processes, which are glycogenolysis and gluconeogenesis. First and foremost, Joey will undergo glycogenolysis, which is the breakdown of glycogen in his liver to form glucose. In the pancreas, glucagon will be released in his bloodstream due to the drop of blood glucose level. This hormone acts as a signal molecule to the liver so that it will increase the rate of glycogenolysis. Glycogen in liver and muscle cells will undergo glycogenolysis, which results in the release of glucose. Glucose released by the liver will be used up by other cells, while glucose released by muscle cells will be used to provide energy for muscle contraction. It will undergo gluconeogenesis. Gluconeogenesis is the production of new glucose from non-carb sources such as lactic acid, lipid and amino acid. Next, as we all know, the breakdown of glucose to form pyruvate is known as glycolysis. In turn, during starvation, the pyruvate will reform back to glucose and this process is known as gluconeogenesis. This is what happened during starvation. The formation of lactic acid by muscle cell will convert to pyruvate in cytoplasm and then to oxaloacetate, from oxaloacetate to phosphoenopyruvate and finally to form glucose pack which later enter the glycolysis pathway. Finally, this gluconeogenesis process will occur in the liver. The process of fat utilization will be stimulated when the hormone glucagon are secreted into the bloodstream and binds to the receptors of adipose tissue. This reaction will catalyze the hydrolysis of triacylglycerols to glycerol and fatty acid and diffuses into the bloodstream. Most glycerols goes into the liver. In the liver, enzymes will convert glycerol to dihydroxyacetophosphate, which is the intermediate molecules of glycolysis. Finally, the product of triacylglycerols breakdown will eventually lead to glycolysis back and the cycle will proceed to Krebs cycles and electron transport chain for ATP production. Fatty acids will undergo beta-oxidation process in the mitochondria to yield acetyl-CoA. However, fatty acids cannot directly enter the mitochondria to yield acetyl-CoA. They need to pass through the transport system named carnitine shuttle after the fatty acids is activated. Glucose formed during gluconeogenesis and metabolism of glycerol will then enter glycolysis for the breakdown of energy. Proteolysis also provides carbon skeletons for gluconeogenesis. Initial sources of proteins are those that turn over rapidly, such as proteins of the intestinal epithelium and the secretions of the pancreas. There are two kinds of amino acids that can be used to make ATP, glucogenic and ketogenic amino acid. Glucogenic amino acid can be converted into alpha keto acid subsequently into glucose through gluconeogenesis in the liver, while ketogenic amino acids are converted into ketone bodies. From here, carbon dioxide is made and enters the citric acid cycle. Glucose produced during starvation will undergo glycolysis, producing ATP and ADH and pyruvate. As a result, these products will enter citric acid cycle. 
NADH and FADH2 is produced and will enter electron transport chain to produce more ATP. However, during protein metabolism, amino acid produced reacts with alpha ketoglutarate, producing modified keto acid and glutamate. The modified keto acid may enter directly into Krebs cycle as acetyl-CoA, alpha ketoglutarate, or succinyl-CoA.